haut, il t'a encore regardé. Many generations now, we have suffered. The Washichu we spoke to, but they don't hear, they're deaf. The women, the children, the old ones, they suffer. You're from the cities. You are our warriors. Our warriors. The spirit that we're on today, maybe another day we'll go into that. Yeah, we're gonna go into all that, man. Another day, but we're dealing with the 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 Anglo the Anglo Anglican speaking tribe. Yeah, but we have how much roots, tribes. and y'all just know the basics. You guys, you guys can't mess with us through the spirit of the Lord. Nope. You guys are on a kindergarten level, man. We're in college. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's that's real, that's that, that's the best way to uh, give you the analogy. And you guys are still in kindergarten. We haven't even made it to first grade yet. That's right. Y'all in pre-K, man. And we're, we're we're about to graduate from college, man. Okay. Oh well, we're hell, we're not even we're not even in college. We're actually the professors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're the, yeah I'm sorry, yeah. I'm going off. Hey, yeah, brother. Yeah, we're the professors. <laughs> we're the guys that's teaching the damn college students, man. Yeah. And you guys are still pre-K students. <laughs> And yeah, you guys still can't even uh, do that. That can't even pass to make it to the first grade. You can't even finger paint right. That's that, that, that's where you guys are, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, page seven. Yeah, but that's why they finger paints, man. You guys are stuck on finger water paints. Yeah, finger painting is still eating sand and eating your blood. Why are we like that? Not boasting. Your heart, but we just read it. Sure, Amos 3 and 7. That's why. Because the Lord gave us the knowledge, man. Right? We got it says here in uh, the book, The Twelve Tribes, page 73. It says, besides. What has been observed concerning prefixes and suffixes, there is a remarkable analogy, says Dr. Edwards, between some words of the Mohegan language and the corresponding words in the Hebrew. Look at that, now the Mohegan, uh, one of the tribes that's up here today, right up here in Connecticut, up there. In Uncasville, Connecticut. In Uncasville, Connecticut, when you go up 95 and you hit the, what is it, the three? Uh, you take 95, you take 395 north, 395 north, and you run up to Uncasville. And it brings you right up to the Mohegan Casino, which the Mohegan tribe, which a lot of them guys, you got crackers all mingled in there, but some Hell of them, yeah. some of us, because when you go to the Mohegan Casino, they have a picture of the tribal council, and they all look like crackers, except for one guy. There's one guy who you can look and you can see, he looks like a real Gadite. So the real Gadites are up in there still, but a lot of crackers, of uh, Edomites are mingled up in amongst them. But the Mohegan is still there, and you got other bands of the Mohegan up there in Norwich. That's a whole big thing going on. There was a big split with that tribe. The so-called, uh, the more uppity part of the tribe, they're the ones that got the money for the casino and all that stuff. But there's other bands of Mohegan right here, like Norwich. Mm -hmm. There was a guy named Chief Standing Bear that I knew. He was Mohegan. Him and his sons, they were cool dudes. I used to hang out with them. And they were, there was a whole big tribal feud over the monies with the casino. So there are a lot of Mohegans that are still uh, up oh, here wow. in Connecticut roaming around. Yeah. Okay, that's right up here in Connecticut where we happen to live. And I know some of the Mohegans. And I know a lot of the Pequots up there. You understand? But it's showing you that those guys are Israelites, man. You know what bro? It says, uh, in the Mohegan, Naya is I. In the Hebrew... Look at that. That's, look at that. That's Lashon Wong Kodash. It says, in the Hebrew, it is Anai, which is the two syllables of the Naya transposed. It says, Kiah, thou or thee, 
the Hebrews use ka, which that's what we use ka. It says the suffix wo is this is this man or this thing. It says very analogous to the uh, hu or hua ipsi. It says nekua na nekua na is we. Now in the nekua na is we. Now in the ancient Hebrew we say anachnoa, and that's how you say we in ancient Hebrew. I say anachnoa. That sounds native all the way. Anachnoa. That's why I like the like, like fire is ash. And, yeah. and, and, and Navajo is Dokla Ash. Dokla Ash. Blue flame. Blue flame. Which flames is blue. Okay, fire is really blue. You turn you it on your it. stove, the flame pops out blue. That's right. Yep. You see that? It's saying here, uh, Nakua Na is we. That's talking about in Mohegan. But in Hebrew, it's, it says it is Naknu or Anaknu. Really, it's a Yeah, they, yeah, they're not pronouncing they're it. They're not pronouncing it right, but but we know where we know what it, what it's dealing with because we used to when we used to have the Hebrew classes here in Bridgeport back in the nineties. A that's one of the words that, I, that sticks out in my head. That's right, a So we know the Hebrew, which means we. We know the Hebrew. You got to know this. this. Is why you got to know the Hebrew, man. You got to know the Hebrew alphabet. A ba ga da ha wa ha ta. No, it's a ba ga da ha wa za ka. That's the alphabet. You start off with the alphabet. Yep. Then once you learn the alphabet, like anything, then you start putting the words together. That's right. You put okay. sounds and syllables together, and then certain, um, you know, cer certain words. Like he, he was speaking here about prefixes, like um, ma in the front of a word means from. That's right. Quam means rise. Yep. Mayum water. Now, if you let's say you brought to drink something. And you would say, uh, ba, Barak, ma, uh, let's say you're going to drink a cup of water, Barak Mayam. Like we, uh, we had a bottle of wine and we're going to share, share the bottle of wine with the brothers. Yep. I'm going to pray over the wine. So what I'm going to say is, uh, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, Barak Yayan Nawa. Okay, Barak, uh, Barak uh, Yayan, Yayan is wine, Nawa, our. Yep. Okay, wine, bless our wine. That's right. Right? Bahashem in the name Yahweh Shah. Right. The water, thank you, Tam Yad, always a man. Okay? Yeah. Tam Yad is always. So you say, uh, Barak, bless, I right? say, uh, Barak, ya yeah, now, bless our wine. That's right. And uh, if you're praying for something, you say, Papa uh, Kusha, Papa Kusha, uh, Barak, uh, Barak, uh, Kazak, Barak is blessed, Kazak, strengthen. Right, I'm, sure. I'm praying for this brother. I'll say Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, the Most High, in the name of Yahweh Shai, Barak, bless, Wakazak, uh, and, and, and strengthen, bless right? And strengthen. Uh, this brother, Tava Dakba, that's his name, right? I will say, Aita, Yam Yam Aita, now, right now, right. Bapa Kusha, please, Bapa Kusha, Shara, please. please. Yep. Okay? Now that all sounds like a native dialect. People hear me sp uh, speaking Hebrew to a brother. He say, "Hey, you speaking your Indian language? That's what it sounds like." That's, that's basically what, what it is. And that's basically yeah. And I know what I tell them. Uh, I don't tell people, everybody, what I'm all about. I say, "Yeah, I'm talking to one of my na my native brothers." Like I might be on the phone with this brother talking, and they they hear me salute the brother or something. That my woman might hear because they know I'm so called native, but they don't know because I don't let everybody know what I'm about. Scripture says, uh, "Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing." So That's sometimes right. we gotta be in clock cat mode, man. Yep. I don't wanna go into it with people. Certain people out in the world that I might know, they don't know that I'm an Israelite and I'm into the truth. If they find out, then they find out. I don't care. Right. But I keep, you know, you know, I move subtly, man, out here in this world. Because right. people will use that against you. So they'll hear me talking on the phone with a brother, and they'll say, well, damn, well, what's that? Damn, you speaking your, is that your native language? I heard you speaking. I say, yeah. Talking to one of my native brothers on the phone. Yeah, because right. I'm telling the truth. I am because our native, so-called native language is Hebrew, man. Okay, you know, brother. Um, that, that, that was pretty much. That was pretty much it. in that book. Right? Now these are stars. Let me see that book. Yeah, that's sure, that's, that's, there you go. Hold it up. What's the name of this book? It's called the Twelve Ten Tribes, tribes of Israel. Tribes. The Ten yeah. Tribes, which goes back to the Apocrypha. Yep. Right, which we read in the Apocrypha, and this is something that came up. That's that's the scholar Timothy R. Jenkins. So what he did was he compiled uh, notes and quotes from. Different people who who um wrote books, different reverends in New England, hell, in New England, going throughout Jersey, all over. 
from Pennsylvania to New Jersey, different places from here in New England, accounts from different people that were there and said this is what they observed. So he took it and compiled it and put it in here. That's what this is right here. This yeah, is a bad book. Audit. This it speaks about the Peruvian Indians in here, the Mexican Indians. It speaks about Montezuma in here too. It, it, it speaks about a whole vast uh, amount of information concerning the ten tribes of Israel, concerning who they are. So it's in here. Excuse me, so that's the proof. You guys, like I said, the ones you that can't get this, then so be it. Fine. This is for the people that have the oil, man. This is for those that have ears, as Yahweh would always say. Okay? And you know what? Amongst the Indian people, Referring back to the Battle of Little Bighorn, yeah. dealing with uh, General George Armstrong Custer, Custer, which Custer really wasn't a real general. He was really, his uh, official rank was he was a colonel. Mm -hmm. But during the Civil War, he fought in the Civil War. He had his own regiment. I believe it was the, they were like a special unit you know, known as the, the Wolves or something. I forgot about that, right? But anyways, he was a colonel. But he was such a good warrior. Custer was such a, he was a, he was a, uh, Valiant warrior in the Civil War fighting against the so-called Confederates that they gave him a field commission as a general Okay, because he was such a good warrior in battle Right that they said we got to make this guy general so that on, on the battlefield He was given the, the powers of being a general, but he wasn't actually he had the powers to command on the battlefield as a general would and Then certain guys of his own rank or certain men that were over him on the battlefield They put him over them on the on, in the on the on the on in the field, right. So that so-called followed him. He still had that commission of a battlefield general, but his official rank with the military was he was only a colonel, Colonel Custer, George uh, Armstrong Custer, right? Armstrong. I mean, his real name was Armstrong, Armstrong Custer. Okay, but they shortened it and called him George, mm -hmm. George Armstrong Custer. But anyways, uh, when Custer came into that expedition, going into the Black Hills, which he was led in on that expedition to find gold. He was sent by the government to find gold in Indian land, which gold was all into the Black Hills. But anyways, right, when he went in there and he was going to come against Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse, Sitting Bull did a Sundance and he, he did ceremony a couple of days before the battle. Right, and uh, what happened was Sitting Bull, on the third day I believe it was, he was given a vision. And then the vision that was pretty much the most high, showed soldiers falling from the sky upside down on their horses out of the sky falling into the camp and then he heard the voice which that was the most high telling Sitting Bull because Sitting Bull was, was a prophet he was the prophet of the time Crazy Horse was the warrior Sitting Bull was the prophet but anyways the voice told him I give you these because they have no ears meaning that the white man didn't understand not to mess with those Indians on that particular time, at that particular time, because they were going to die. Custer was told that if he went and messed with the Cheyenne or the Indians all up in that region at that time, that he was going to die. He didn't understand it. He didn't get it. He didn't see it. He didn't, they didn't have the understanding that they were going to be defeated in that particular battle. So that, that seems to so that proved. Now in the scriptures, Yahweh always said, who have ears to hear? The voice told Sitting Bull, these have no ears. So that proved that the Yahweh and Yahweh was dealing with the so-called native tribes that were here and that they were Israelites, all right? The only reason we were taken down because it was time to ask the, the prophecy in Genesis.